When we were talking about spectral clustering in our earlier video, I talked about having a four-dimensional representation of our original data. Now, this is easy to just talk about, having four-dimensional data, ten-dimensional, or even two-hundred-dimensional. But if we try to imagine what this would look like, we fail to do so quite fast. Starting with just one dimension, let's say we want to visualize the age of a group of people. This can be easily done by just plotting them along a single line. If we now want to include height as well, it's also rather simple. We just add a second dimension to our data points and align them accordingly. Well, looks easy enough to understand. We can derive that younger people start out very small and grow in height rather quickly. Towards the later years, people tend to get a bit shorter again. But now we also want to include information about weight, income, eye color, shoe size, whether a person lives in a big city or a small town, number of pets. Well, you get the idea. Up to three dimensions, humans can keep up with visualizing how things might look like. But as soon as we go to four dimensions and higher, we lose any intuitive understanding for our data. Unfortunately, many real-world datasets contain thousands of data points with tens of dimensions, or even more. Visualizing this dataset in a plot will not be feasible anymore. But, fortunately for us, there is a solution to help us deal with this issue. Dimensionality reduction. With dimensionality reduction methods, we aim at reducing, as the name says, the number of dimensions of our dataset. For plotting, this can be very helpful as we reduce a dataset with 10 dimensions to only 2 dimensions and plot it in a simpler graph. But this is also useful, for example, to reduce 500 dimensions to, let's say, 20 or 30 dimensions. Many predictive models benefit from having to deal with fewer dimensions and could lead to a potential increase in performance. But wait, don't we lose a lot of information if we just discard 480 dimensions? Well, yes and no. In datasets with many dimensions, usually not all of them are important for the task we want to solve. So the crucial point is that we want to reduce the dimensionality as much as possible while retaining as much information as possible that is important for our task. And one of the many methods that can achieve this result is called Principal Component Analysis, or short, PCA. To demonstrate what PCA does, let's consider a simple two-dimensional example that we want to reduce to a single dimension. A simple approach could be to project all data points onto one of the axes, as shown here. This is equal to just discarding our y dimension. But this might not be the best case, as the information that we just discarded might be crucial to distinguish points sufficiently. So, with PCA, we want to keep as much information as possible. Conceptually, this could be done by introducing a new axis. This axis will be aligned in a way that the variance of our data is maximized, which essentially minimizes our squared error. This new axis is called a principal component of our data. In this specific example, this axis is the first principal component. This component is neither the x nor y axis, but rather a linear combination of the two which gathers information from both of them. We can now project our data points onto this component to obtain a one-dimensional visualization that is more informative than the one we had previously. And now we can also easily distinguish each data point on this line. In more complex datasets with higher dimensionality, we usually want to find more than one principal component. So we essentially look for more than one axis where most of the data variance lies. Quite often we want to use the first two principal components to visualize our complex data in a simple plot that shows most of the information carried in the dataset. In practice, if we have our first component and want to add a second one, we will choose one with orthogonal direction to the first component. The idea here is that once we have found the direction where most of the variance happens, our first principal component, any information that remains to be accounted for will lie on directions that are not considered at all by our first component. And these directions are orthogonal to our first component. With each additional principal component, we will see that it is orthogonal to all the previous components. We can also analyze our principal components by looking at how much information is carried by the first, let's say five principal components. Intuitively, the more principal components we will consider, the more information we will keep. But if we plot the number of principal components against the information percentage that we keep, we can see that the increase of information with each additional component shrinks drastically. This means that in a dataset with 500 dimensions, we can safely pick the first 20 principal components to obtain a new dataset with only 20 dimensions while carrying most of the information of our original data. However, it is important to keep in mind that those 20 dimensions will be different from the original 500.